Hi, today we're going to talk to regional manager for JAG, Kate Marlisha Kearney, not only about how she became associated with JAG, K, but also about our effort in JAG, K on diversity, equity, and inclusion. And that's on this episode of Coffee with Chuck. All right, you probably noticed that I had my KU cup. And Marlisha, I'm sure you're a huge Kansas Jayhawk fan, but this is the first Coffee with Chuck since the Kansas Jayhawks won the national, the NCAA basketball championship. So I had to have a appropriate um, coffee containage for this episode. Does that make sense? I'm absolutely a KU fan because they're a Kansas team and they're winners. So yes. Yay. They're winners, at least in basketball. <laughs> and we have high hopes for football. High hopes. <laughs> So Marlisha Kearney, hey, you are a regional manager with JAG K. You have been a career specialist, but there are many other fascinating aspects of your life. And so I was wondering uh, if you could tell us a little bit about yourself, how you got to JAG K. And then we'll kind of get into what we're working on with our group and some of the training you just took. Awesome. So thank you for having me, Chuck. I feel honored to be a part of Coffee with Chuck. But um, yes, I started out with Jack K as a career specialist a little more than seven years ago. Um, and since after leaving being a career specialist, I've been a regional manager for the last uh, like four years. I got to Jack K because um, I am also a licensed professional hairstylist for the past 22 years, 20 years, I think, 20 years. And so one of my clients used to be a um, JAG manager and saw me coming out of the sub office and said, are you looking for work? And I'm like, I don't know, maybe. And it happened to be at my son's high school. And I was like, well, he probably doesn't want me there. And I ended up being the career specialist there. And it was the best move I made in my life. I was so thankful to be there with my son and to be able to pour into young people in the same way that I did with him. And so that's kind of a little bit how I made it to Jack K. Um, I do a lot of things in my life. And so I don't know how much you want me to tell, but one of the things that I think is cool is I opened my phone the other day and I saw a picture of me and you, Chuck, at our state training a couple of years ago, and it was me on my bike. And so um, I have lots of hobbies, but that's one of my favorite hobbies is riding my motorcycle. So one of the other things you do, which I found very interesting, is you are a professional in teaching people how to handle a firearm safely. I am. Absolutely. Um, so yes, I am a NRA certified pistol instructor and I am looking to get several more endorsements. Um, the way I, I ended up doing that is because I've been around guns my whole life. Um, there's pictures of me as a toddler with shotguns in my hand, hands. And I don't know how safe that is, but <laughs> it definitely. But you should know because you teach a safety class. <laughs> well, I'm going to say that let me say what? I'm not sure, but I'm going to say my dad was keeping me safe. And so I bet he was. Well, um, you're here. You're here. Yeah, I'm here. Absolutely. So growing up, um, my, my father had guns. He's from Oak Muggy, Oklahoma. And so it was just a big part of his life. Um, and it became a big part of my life. Just kind of growing up as a kid, I had BB guns. And so what I realized is that in my community as a black woman, just firearms, firearms training, um, just the talk of firearms could be taboo. And so you tell people that you have guns and lots of guns and they and their wheels start turning like, what does that mean? And they try to put you in a box sometimes, not every time. And so what I really wanted to do with being a firearms instructor is to, number one, bring education and safety to my community. And so I've been a pistol instructor for the past couple of years, but it's also a hobby that I love that it's good exercise. You get out there on the range and your heartbeat gets to racing and your arms get tired. And so I also use it as a form of stress relief. 
great. Well, so it's interesting. This is actually a good segue into what we're going to talk about because you mentioned as a black woman, clearly I have no experience as a black woman. I know this is going to come to you as a surprise, <laughs> but absolutely no experience. And so one of the things we've been trying to do internally within Jack K is and jump in here, Marlisha, is, is try to understand other people's perspectives better, I think. Uh, and then, so we formed this, this group, and I don't even know what we call ourselves anymore, but it's a group of folks, and we, we discuss um, diversity, equity, inclusion, and, and obviously that's all moving toward uh, an outcome. And so one of the outcomes is to provide our career specialists and our students resources to deal with issues that may, may arise as a matter of misunderstanding or, or other things uh, that could happen. So Marlisha is the facilitator of our group. And so she's been leading us over the past more than a year, I think. I, I don't remember when we started, but can you better explain what our group is about and what we're, we're, what we're trying to do. Since well, I I'll try. <laughs> so I would call our group an employee resource group, just um, where individuals get together and try to work towards a common goal. Um, and we do talk about um, just DEI initiatives in the organization where with JAG, we are trying to prepare students for a successful future. And, but that also means learning how to navigate a diverse workforce. And many times when people hear the word diversity or the acronym DEI, they think it means certain things, generally race and gender or gender identity. And there's so many more facets to diversity um, than just those things. And so I was um, able to be a part of the Solving for X annual conference, their 34th annual this year. I attended the conference for three days and sat in on many wonderful sessions presented by DEI leaders across the globe. And so what our group is trying to do is to bring back resources to not only um, the organization, but for that to trickle down to those students and to help them as they navigate high school and beyond to be able to be great work partners in a diverse workforce. And one of the things, so I actually received a scholarship to go to the conference. And the way like the I- The first one ever, <laughs> like you were the first recipient. I was, you're right. I was the first recipient of um, a scholarship based on the Jordan Robert Memorial Scholarship. Um, the gentleman had been a um, friend and partner to the forum for many years and he passed away and the way to honor him is they gave away a scholarship to attend the conference and I applied for the, the scholarship thinking that there's no way I could get it. I don't ever get anything. And so I was so excited when I got the um, email that I had won the scholarship competition. And so one of the things that I said in my essay with the scholarship was that I want to help people be able to um, interact with others to respect somebody's beliefs without compromising their own. And so it it's, can be difficult, but in the grand scheme of things, to me, it's not that hard. And so I was able to attend the conference and learn lots of stuff. And I want to talk about some of the things you learned um, before that, I wanted to talk a little bit about our group and, and kind of how um, we've interacted. As I mentioned, you and I are different uh, from a, a background perspective, and certainly um, we look different. I'm going to, in case you don't know, I am a white male, <laughs> and um, Marlisha, you are not. We have different experiences growing up. Um, I came from the metropolis of Augusta, Kansas, about 6,500. But now, did you grow up in Wichita or? I did. Okay. I was so, born and raised in Wichita. I spent summers and breaks in Oklahoma. A little bit. Wichita is a little bit larger than Augusta. <laughs> but, um, but what I found, and I, I think a lot of this too is just personality driven, but one of the first 
people I met at a large state event for Jag K was actually Marlisha. I sat down with her and talked to her at lunch in Salina. And we really hadn't talked or maybe at all, but Marlisha is the kind of person that, you know, you just, you feel like you've known because you're outgoing and you're kind and friendly and all those things. And so naturally I think it's easier to talk to you um, just because of your personality. Um, but there are some other things we've discussed regarding race and, and biases. And, you know, I've, I've asked you questions about some of those things that I just didn't know the answer to and just getting your thoughts on, on, you know, your perspective or, um, you know, there are things like, um, things I've never dealt with, like driving and being pulled over and because of my skin color. And those are things that like you've had to talk to your son about. And I've never had that conversation with any of my kids. And so things like that, it, it, it's our group has been, and I feel that way really about a number of people in, in our organization, but Marlisha has been especially easy to talk to um, because, um, well, I feel safe in asking you because I, I know you won't judge me. And one of the things we've talked about in our group is, you know, everyone has their own truth and there are parameters. We, um, we respect everybody's point of view. We may not agree with everybody's point of view, but we, we respect them as people um, and trust them and, and their intentions are good. So that's been very valuable for me, but I was wondering, Marlisha, um, just how, how this group has impacted you or have you learned anything from it other than I'm just an idiot or, um, <laughs> I mean, tell me some of the, the, um, the, out, the, um, takeaways you've gotten from this group thus far. So thus far, first of all, let me say that I appreciate you as the head of the organization having given us the opportunity to explore these concepts because that's not always the case. And I think any organization that kind of understands DEI and tried to get better is going to benefit tremendously, even if it's just from the conversations. And so thank you for allowing me to be a part of that. But in the in the group, we do navigate some pretty like rough conversations that it can be hard to talk about these things because we don't want to be judged. And we all have um, just inherent biases that is just part of us. It's part of our experiences. It's part of our culture. It's part of our um, upbringing. And so we bring that to the table, whether you like it or not. And so you're right. You're not a black woman, but then I'm also not a white man. And so we can definitely converse and gain knowledge from one another that'll help us later. And so I've, I've been appreciative of hearing the different perspectives to help understand um, maybe where others are coming from and different situations. And then how am I able to navigate these conversations outside of the, the group? And how does that make, um, how does that, how does that help me as a manager? Because I also manage a diverse group of people. And so like, I just appreciate the opportunity to sit in those those conversations because they can be a little bit rough. But I have not walked away from a conversation feeling like, uh oh, <laughs> I've I've done it now. <laughs> um, so well, yeah, and, that, that's what yeah. And you raised a, a good point earlier about um, diversity. A lot of times we talk about racial diversity, but we've also got gender diversity. We've got religious diversity, political diversity. I mean, we've got all of that. Uh, and I don't know if this was in your training, but this is something also that I think is really important that we've learned in our training um, during the summer is um, diversity. You can have diversity and we do have diversity, but inclusion is is really a key and, and, and then equity. And then, you know, equity that can be different things to different people, depending on where they're coming from. Cause some people, um, they, I think take that, they, they kind of demonize the word and it's not intended to be that way. Um, 
but but inclusion there's a, a great saying and i'll botch it so you probably know what i'm talking about with the dance do you know what i'm uh, talking about not sure. oh yes i think i do but go ahead just in case well I so i think and maybe we'll have to edit this but um you know like diversity is inviting someone to the dance inclusion is inviting the person to dance is that mm -hmm. is that yeah yeah yes, so i understand the analogy yes Yes. Okay. It looks better when you have the the visual, but yes, yeah. I understand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So anyway, uh, those are all things we've been talking about, um, and then some of these don't relate. Don't. I mean, it's just uh, I'm trying to think of there. There are concepts that that um, are universal. It may not even be necessarily. Uh, uh, a diversity or inclusion issue, but like de-escalation is one of the things. Like if you're dealing with someone who is not seeing eye to eye or there's some kind of conflict, there are some tools that you can use to de-escalate a situation so it doesn't get out of hand. And those are some of the practical things we're talking about equipping uh, our staff and students with. Um, can you think of some other things that we've discussed? Um, yes, that, that does take care of some of it. So yes, de-escalation, um, understanding. So when we talk about diversity, that is not just those things, but a lot of stuff. So I also um, gave a session at our leadership development conference about diversity and we talked about not just um, race and gender and gender identity but also generational diversities so when we're in a workforce with older adults and younger adults and how those two um, can mix um, cultural and so I, a young lady shared with me how please and thank you is is maybe an American thing. And in her culture, it wasn't so much. And she didn't realize the importance of saying please and thank you until her um, sponsor family, you know, told her why please and thank you was very important. And so we've, we've read the book, Courageous Conversations by, is it, is it Glenn Singleton? Yes, yes, it is. Yes, it was actually referenced in the conference. But reading that book really kind of helped me to understand some things as well. Uh, just, just how, even as a Black woman, how I can also have bias um, towards other Black people that, that I'm not the expert and that everyone's experience may be different. And so I can only tell you about myself my experience and I invite people to share about their experience and hopefully we can learn from each other. And so I think that's what the, the group has definitely helped me to be able to do. And what are some of the things you learned at the training, the uh, Solving for X training? I know you're going to say that. <laughs> so I, I took several um, sessions. One was mental health at work. And so we don't think of mental health as a, a diversity or um, equity and inclusion concept, but it definitely is. And as we navigate a world that has changed so quickly, we see how um, people's mental state can definitely affect their work, their lives, and how do we include people when they, when they have, um, when they are feeling overwhelmed maybe at work or when they have dealt with some mental, um, I don't want to call them issues because they're not issues, they're life issues. And so, but if they've had some things going on in their lives. And one of the things that I did not even think of is that um, substance abuse could be a part of that. How comfortable am I if you told me that, you know, I used to abuse drugs and alcohol. Does that make you a bad person? No, it doesn't. It means that you used to abuse drugs and alcohol but those types of diversities. And so it was very interesting um, listening to how we can navigate some of that, how organizations may be able to help their uh, people with mental issues at work. And so just being cognizant that we are all mental, spiritual, and physical beings and how that, that affects us at work. We also talked about allyship that even if I am not a person in a marginalized group, how I can leverage my privilege and help them 
you know, in their quest to be included or um, have equity. And so allyship, what that looks like. And it just may be, you know, seeing a person or including them to, to be an ally for that marginalized group. Um, I also took a session that talked about using film to help understand different um, DEI you know, things. And so we watched Black Boy Joy. And if you have not seen it, I think you should definitely watch it. It is a short 17 minute short film. And um, the title we determined was a little bit misleading, but it definitely took you through some generational differences, some cultural differences and how people navigate that even in their own families. Um, I also learned one of the things that really resonated with me is how we think of hard work equals success and how maybe that's not always the case, that definitely hard work helps, but it's usually hard work with support is how we end up successful. So when people um, support our dreams, support our goals, how we can definitely obtain them a lot easier than working alone, just working hard doesn't always get it. So definitely hard work and support. Uh, that's all I can think of off the top of my head. I was going to write a whole report just to be able to bring it back to the group and bring these tools back. And so I'm still watching videos of sessions that I was not able to attend, which is the great thing of, you know, Zoom that you can record that. And then they put it on the platform for later. What What was your childhood like? Did you have any experiences where you, you know, had to deal with with either racism or just differences in culture or um, things that that maybe at that point kind of um, formed your outlook today on these types of issues and or um, has anything since then changed your impression either this training or some of these conversations or any, that's a really clunky way of asking a question. I don't know. Did you understand any of that, Marley? I think I did. But if I need help, then you go ahead and help me along. But yes, growing up in Wichita, I interact with, with several different, um, just different groups. Even on my block, there were different people from different backgrounds and races. And so, um, but one of the things that you made me think of is that I was also a gymnast. And so I was in gymnastics from probably seven to 12 years old. And it seemed like so much longer at the time, maybe 13, because I can remember being in the eighth grade, maybe, and, and being a gymnast. But I was the only Black person on, on my team, competition team. And what did that look like? Um, and sometimes I didn't really realize the difference, maybe because through a child's eyes, there is no difference. Um, I, I, I do remember... <laughs> I do remember maybe being called about, called out about um, my powerful legs or the shape of my body in the way it related to gymnastics. And what I hear now in those same comments, it was about my race and my ethnicity, the way I was made. And so um, it wasn't derogatory at all. It was just the difference in me and maybe some of the other young ladies because I was black and they weren't. Um, but yes, I feel like I've always been in different sets where I may be the only me. So I talk about riding a motorcycle. And when you think of a motorcycle rider, who do you think of? Media tells us that it's older white men on Harley bikes. But in my world, it is so many people that look like me that ride motorcycles. And so um, that's one way that I've had to kind of navigate diversity. Um, I've been in places where <laughs> I was, I'm the only woman. So we're not trained for firearms training. I am the only black person there, period. Not black woman, just the only black person. And how do I navigate that, that place and space with these people? But one thing I try to always do is find a commonality. So just because I'm the only Black person there doesn't mean that I don't have something in common with these people. We all have a love or a passion for this or for that. And so I have met many wonderful people on my journey. I am the person who reaches out to the people um, to, to speak to people, to learn people's stories, because... I want to hear what, what other people have to say, as well as talking. So if anybody knows me, they know I love to talk. And so I meet all kinds of people. 
in our last oh, three or four minutes, what advice could you give someone? And maybe you just kind of hit on that, but but maybe someone who's uncomfortable talking about these issues, whether it's racial diversity, you know, gender, sexual orientation, whatever the the differences may be. What advice would you give someone to try to either bridge that gap, understand someone else's perspective, or um, or address a situation where you're you feel like you're being oppressed or attacked by someone based on a difference? That's a loaded question. But first, how would I bridge the gap to number one, realize that we're all human and and crave that human connection. But in those conversations, in those moments where we feel most uncomfortable, maybe realize your own boundaries. So um, I have learned that if you're not healed from something or something is still an issue for you, then maybe you don't share that part of yourself. And so I know myself, I don't share everything with everybody all at once. I keep some things a little close because I don't want to have to explain. It's not everybody's business. And that's okay. That doesn't mean that I am not, um, you know, being my true authentic self. Also, that when you have conversations that um, are often uncomfortable to navigate, to remember that There's no expectation. In this moment, we don't have to change the world. You know, it's okay to listen to somebody else's viewpoint. And then at the end say, I don't agree. And that's okay. Doesn't make you a horrible person. Um, It makes you human. And so knowing how to do that. In situations where I've felt like, I don't feel oppressed. I do feel like there are often situations where if maybe I look different, or sound different, then maybe there would have been a different outcome, but I don't ever navigate those situations with hostility. Um, I try to always remind myself that just because my experiences help me understand the situation doesn't mean that everybody is out to get me. And so maybe I ask you a few um, probing questions like, oh, is this the same for this person here as it is for me over here? And if you say, well, no, it's different because they're different, then we got a problem. And, and then how do I navigate that? And that's when you and take that, out your gun. No, you no, no. trained to say, oh. <laughs> no, but people think that, okay? That that's what happens when you own a gun. Absolutely not. That violence is never the answer to settling any kind of confrontations that, um, like, we all seen the slap heard across the world, like, you know, sometimes people can get a little upset and, and it's okay to de-escalate, step back from the conversation and say, I apologize if I offended you in any way. That was not my intention. But remember, intention has nothing to do with impact. Just because we don't mean to hurt feelings doesn't mean that that doesn't happen. And so we still have to, you know, be able to move in that space that says the impact was hurtful, but that wasn't my intention. What can I do next time, you know, to to be able to be in the same space with you? And so just kind of keeping some of those tips um, in mind that I I celebrate everybody. You know, I respect everyone, even if it's not my life, that I just want people to be happy, happy with themselves and happy with the space that they take up in this world. And let me do the same. That's great. I don't, I don't know how we could end it any better than that. Marlisha, thank you for spending time for uh, uh, getting through this with my crackly voice. Hopefully that'll get better <laughs> for the next time. But uh, we really appreciate your leadership in our group and, and all of the great things you do with Jag K. And so until next time, enjoy your coffee. Thank you so much. I appreciate it, Chuck. Have a wonderful rest of the day. Bye. Thanks for watching Coffee with Chuck. Please subscribe below and you may want to check out the video that's attached.